I'm Therese Lockwood. I'm an advocate with the Hennepin County Attorney's Office, and I'm going to be reading the victim impact statement for Katerina Ruschek. She is the sister-in-law to Justine, or would have been. Your Honor, the effect of Justine, Jesse's death on my family and I has been immense and profound. The day that I first received the news, I was feeding my children breakfast. At the time, Maya was three and a half years old and Bo was six. I was getting them ready for school and I was preparing for my first day in my new job as I had been promoted to director of my team, a newly created role in recognition of my hard work. I answered my phone and saw that it was John calling and he did not sound okay at all. He was wailing into the phone so I ran into the bedroom and shut the door. They shot her, he screamed, they shot her. It took me a few minutes to understand what he was saying. And when he said that, Jessie had been shot and she was dead, all I could say was no, 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 and I fell to the floor in screaming pain. We had been, just been talking to Jessie a few days before on the phone, where Jason and I had told her that we had decided to bring the kids to Hawaii and we would all be there for the wedding in four weeks' time. We had booked the accommodation, paid for the tickets for the four of us, and we were all excited to go. John and I cried and wailed and moaned together on the phone in disbelief. But it was in his final scream that the sound still haunts me. I have had deep therapy about that sound, and sometimes I wake in the night hearing it in my dreams. No words. We shared pain through our screaming wails. I felt my heart breaking as I sat shaking and crying on the floor. What's wrong, Mummy? A little voice behind the door said. I turned and said, nothing, darling. Everything's all right. So I put on a poker face, wiped away my tears, and stepped out into the hall with a smile on my face. All right, kids, let's get ready for school. We're all going to have a great day today. I lied, holding back a flood of tears and sharp pains of grief and sadness clawing in my insides. And so I stepped into Mama Bear mode, a mode in which I've been living in for two years. It's a mode where you package up all of your own pain, fear, grief, loss and attention to your own needs and put that to one side at an immense cost to your own health and well-being because you know you have to make it sure everyone is all right, that your babies and your husband need you to make everything all right. But it's not all right. After getting the kids to school, I spent the day with John, Jason, and Marion at John's house in a flood of tears and a whirlpool of pain and grief. The first phone call we got from anyone, official, from the city of Minneapolis was the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office asking for dental records. No chaplain called, no mayor called, no Minneapolis police officer or BCA called, dental records. The second call was about organ don donation. They were brutal phone calls, matter of fact, straight to the point, no care for the hell we found ourselves in, no official apologies yet. Looking back in retrospect, retrospect, we can all see that something didn't add up from that first day, but the effect of that broken system only really sank in almost two years later when we spent every day for a month sitting in the Hennepin County Courthouse listening to 70 plus witnesses testify as to what happened to our Jezzy the night she was shot and killed, murdered by Muhammad Noor. The likes and the cover-ups for the sake of protecting their own, with no regard for the loss or suffering of Jezzy or her family and loved ones, two years we waited in this suspended state of grief that would flood back up at any time in any situation when you least expected it. It's PTSD. After spending that first day with the news of her murder in a whirlpool of pain, tears, screams, and grief, Jason and I went home to our babies and told them what happened. Auntie Peanut had been in an accident. Her heart had stopped beating because it was hit by a bullet fired from a gun. We didn't want to tell the whole truth that it had been a police officer for fear they would be afraid of peace officers, people they had been told their whole life to go to if they needed help. Officers of the peace, who in Australia really do protect and serve the community without using excessive force or killing them without reasonably assessing whether there is a threat in the first place. My kids both have been in therapy for two years. Maya has severe separation anxiety and doesn't deal with transitions from one situation to the next. 
She has reoccurring nightmares of being snatched by a robber from her bed and of two men dressed in black with a gun and all of her family lying in a pool of red blood in front of her. An image that is absolutely heartbreaking for me when she first drew the picture of in her therapist's office and then asked me, Mommy, how do you draw a gun? Bo has general anxiety, and every night when going to sleep, he has a panic attack. He has to know exactly where in the house we will be when he is asleep. The lounge room couch or the back room couch, for fear that he will, we will have disappeared when he wakes up. He has screaming, hyperventilating panic attacks when I do the laundry and he can't see me for 10 minutes. The first six months after Jesse was murdered, Jason was thoroughly depressed and sometimes would stay in bed all weekend with his head under the duna. I picked up the slack in caring for the kids, which after working a stressful job all week left me as thoroughly exhausted with little energy or patience for anything. I, too, have been in therapy for two years. I have anxiety and depression, and I have found it hard to sleep at night. I stopped exercising, took up an un unhealthy lifestyle choices, and emotional eating. I am now on 15 milligrams of Lexapro, an anti-anxiety and depression drug, that we have been steadily increasing the dose for because the normal levels don't work for me. I never showed up on my first day in my new promotion. I took two months off of work on stress leave, and as a result, have been stigmatized at work as someone that can't cope under pressure and have been passed over for other job opportunities. I was told that I need to work on my resilience, and believe me, I think I'm mastering that right now. I have pulled back from my job and no longer feel capable of working to the executive level that I was working in before. I continue to have horrible nightmares about my family being killed or running away or my babies being kidnapped. I have insomnia, panic attacks, emotional eating issues, bouts of depression that I am increasingly medicated for. I have withdrawn from my friends and from socializing. Two years ago, Jason and I were planning on moving to Oregon to be closer to Jesse and Don. Those plans are no longer going to happen. That opportunity is lost. Jazzy's life was stolen from her by Muhammad Noor, which shattered our family and our plans to live closer and grow old together. But also, I will not have my children grow up, grow up in a society where police officers are not people I would feel comfortable telling my ch kids to run to for help, because they shoot first and ask questions later, disregarding their duty to protect and serve their citizens, where police officers are trained to unload their entire magazine into a threat but are not properly trained to ascertain a threat or de-escalate a situation first, where someone's right to own a gun is more important than a community's desire to exist in peace, and where my babies have to do drills at a primary school in case of a gun massacre. I can't comprehend living my life in fear like that. In Jazzy's death, I have lost a friend and a sister-in-law. I have lost the opportunity to be part of her life and see Jazzy get married to the man she loved and be part of their life going forward. I have lost the opportunity to cuddle Jazzy's newborn ba babies and build a loving relationship with them and see my children build loving relationships with their first cousins. My children have lost their loving and doting Ani Peanut. I have lost the opportunity to grow old with a full and happy family around us at holidays, vacations, random weekend gatherings, and quiet times. There will always be an empty chair at the end and a space in our hearts and a deafening silence where once there was Jazzy's laughter that no one will ever fill again. Although we have all come even closer as a family over the last two years and will continue to grow stronger from this experience, the impact and the pain caused by Jazzy's murder is still being felt stronger than ever. And I expect to always be in pain that we carry in all our hearts. Thank you for the opportunity to express to the court the impact this has had on me. Katerina Ruchek, sister-in-law.